last time we were discussing about the linear momentum conservation and we were looking into some examples to illustrate the use of the Reynolds transport theorem for working out problems related to that. Uh, we will continue with some more examples. Uh, let us take an example where <coughs> let us say you have a solid body, say a solid uh, body of whatever shape, maybe circular shape if you want it to be so and fluid is flowing, it is coming from a free stream with a velocity, uniform velocity say u infinity and because of the presence of the solid the velocity is disturbed and if you go a little bit away from the solid and if you draw the velocity profile say the velocity profile is obtained something like uh, let us make a sketch of how the velocity profile is there. Let us say that the velocity profile varies in this way. In one of our later chapters, we will see that uh, what are the factors that will determine that what should be this velocity profile or what should be the nature of variation of this velocity profile. But for the time being, let us say that uh, this is the this is a qualitative sketch of how the velocity profile varies. Assume that it is totally symmetric with respect to the center line and the velocity profile is such that uh, like uh, at, at the middle right if you draw it totally in a symmetric manner at the middle it is like a minimum and then it increases in both sides comes to almost u infinity at a given height. Let us say that this height at which it comes to almost u infinity is A. And let us say this velocity profile is given uh, in terms of the x and y coordinates. Let us say that x is the axial direction and y is the transverse direction and the velocity profile say is given by u by u infinity say is equal to sin this is given okay not that it has to be like this this is just an example uh, we are trying to satisfy the condition that when y equal to a u equal to u infinity that is how this velocity uh, profile is there so the question is that what is the total drag force on the solid body exerted by the water or the fluid let us assume that the density of the fluid is rho and uh, we have to find out based on these dimensions. So how do we go about this? We worked out and worked out a very similar problem when we were considering flow over a flat plate. This is not flow over a flat plate, this is flow uh, past some body of arbitrary contour but the policy or the philosophy remains the same. So we have to basically find out uh, or we have to identify a control volume and see what is the net force on the control volume. So to identify a control volume, uh, see what part of the, the control volume will have some inlet and some outlet. So uh, one inlet is this one which is straight forward that the flow is entering, outlet this is straight forward and you can see that outlet is interesting only up to y equal to a or y equal to minus a. because beyond that the velocity is uniform. So if we take a control volume say something like this uh, where we consider one inflow uh, boundary, one outflow boundary and across other boundaries we do not want any flow. So what should be the edges of the other boundaries? They should be streamlines so that there is no flow across those. So let us say that we consider a streamline like this I and mean, these are not 
horizontal lines these are inclined ones so let us just magnify those a little bit to represent that let us say that this is one extreme streamline this is another extreme streamline so these are streamlines keep in mind that these it is not necessary to choose a control volume which uh, which has which contains streamlines but only elegance it gives to us is that we do not have to bother about the cross flows but if we just take say some horizontal lines at the top and the bottom and constitute say a rectangular piece as the control volume then there will be flow across that and one has to make calculations related to that so it is just a matter of, matter of convenience for choosing the control volume maybe you consider only the water in the control volume so you exclude the solid part now let us write the expressions for the mass and the linear momentum conservation for the control volume so one one thing that remains unknown is that what is this height h because we have constructed a streamline from the right uh, from from the edge of this layer where u becomes u infinity uh, this is not a boundary layer uh, we will discuss later that what is the difference between this and the boundary layer as such so uh, when uh, we have uh, st the streamline starting from the edge uh, the streamline will end up here at some arbitrary point which is not known to us so we have to find that out so let us uh, say that we mark the edges as a b c d and try to identify that what are the uh, expressions for the conservation of mass so if you write the conservation of mass you have the dm dt for the system i am just writing it straight away without uh, going for the explanation of different terms because we have already encountered that so dm dt for the system in the left hand side is zero then we assume that it's a steady flow not changing with time so the right hand side you have first term zero and then the term integral of rho vr dot n da so that term we have to basically right so what will be the corresponding expression here so you have one outflow and one inflow so there is no flow across these two that is the advantage of taking the streamline so what will be this term for the outflow say rho what is da da you can take as dy into the width let us say w is the width perpendicular to the plane of the figure that is the width of this body so rho into u dy into w that is the total when integrated from say y equal to minus a to plus a that means 2 into y equal to 0 to a that is the outflow and then the inflow that is there that is with a minus sign because velocity is along the positive x outward normal is along the negative x so what will be that minus again 2 rho u infinity into h into w right so from here you can get what is h because that is an unknown that you have to find out mass conservation tells us how to find out that so h equal to integral u dy 0 to a divided by u infinity next conservation of linear momentum conservation of linear momentum what it will tell us the resultant force which is acting on the control volume so what is the resultant force that acts on the control volume there is a pressure distribution 
but because it is a op it, it is open to the ambient the pressure is same all around so the net effect of pressure distribution may be zero but in reality uh, it is it, it it may be so that here the pressure is not same as the atmospheric pressure but something which is different from that but let us assume that there is a uniform pressure distribution just just for simplicity then uh, the only force that remains along x so we let, let us say we are bothered about the linear momentum transport along x the only force that remains important is the drag force is equal to again the unsteady term is not there in the right hand side first and then basically these things will be multiplied with another u so it will be plus 2 rho integral of u square dy w then minus Okay. So, you can substitute the value of h here sorry this is u infinity square. Two row we have already taken as common, so that will be the corresponding expression, right? So what we have done is we have replaced H with this expression. Okay. Now, <coughs> what does this force represent? This is the force exerted by what on what? This is the force exerted by the solid body on the fluid control volume and you can easily see it say you do not know it. but the mathematical sign will tell you see u square is less than u u infinity. So, this integral when it is evaluated it will be negative. So, that means you have a negative force that means force which is along the negative x direction. So, what force is there along the negative x direction it is definitely force exerted by the solid on the fluid because it is trying to resist the motion of the fluid. On the other hand, the force exerted by the fluid on the solid is equal in magnitude to this, but opposite in sense. So that is along the positive x direction. That we all that we also call as drag force on the solid object. There are certain interesting things that we can observe from this problem. One interesting thing is, it appears as if this force does not depend on the shape of this object, but that is an illusion. Why? where the effect of the shape of the object comes into the picture, the velocity, the velocity profile. So, the velocity profile will very much depend on what is the shape of the object. So, we have assumed the velocity profile, but this is like it, it does it is not that it, it is it comes just arbitrarily. This whatever is the velocity profile that velocity profile should come from the shape of the body and therefore, that is where the shape of the body becomes critical. Okay. Now, the other thing is that it will also appear as if the force does not depend on the viscosity of the fluid. It appears so. 
So, it is a, it is a, it is a kind of like uh, not an intuitive thing that you expect the force due to viscosity because if there is no viscous effect perhaps there would be no drag, but there is no there is no viscosity here there is no there is no there is no presence of the parameter viscosity here so what what is the viscosity doing here or the question may be posed in this way that uh, is it always necessary that viscosity will directly come into the picture for the drag force calculation see viscous effect is there there are two important effects which are important uh, I mean which are prevalent here one is the viscous effect another is the contour of the body as the fluid is flowing over the contour of the body there is a change in pressure so uh, one is the geometrical effect another is the viscous effect and this velocity profile is a combined consequence of what has taken place so once you are given a velocity profile you may be abstracted of anything else but where from the velocity profile has originated for that viscosity may be important but once you get a velocity profile see that is what the integral balance is giving integral balance is the net effect it is not microscopically looking into what has happened at individual points but it has got a gross consequence what is what is the consequence some velocity profile at the outlet and this kind of gross consequence is important because you can measure it experimentally experimentally point to point measurement is difficult it is not impossible but it is it is always more expensive to do that but experimentally you can at least find out velocity profile on a given section so you can have uh, uh, different probes or say uh, may not be as simple as a pitot tube probe but uh, you, you you may have uh, any velocity measurement along this section that is not difficult and uniform velocity which, which is the free stream velocity that you know so from the experimental understanding of what is the velocity profile uh, at the inlet and at the outlet you may be in a position to experimentally calculate or rather to calculate from the experimental data what is the drag force and uh, the limitation of that is it does not pinpoint that uh, how how the flow field varied from one point to another point to give rise to the drag force but it gives the total effect in an integral sense now how it varies from one point to another point for that we have to look into the corresponding differential equation for viscous flows that we will do in our next chapter now let us look into another problem <coughs> let us say that uh, there is a pipe like this it has to be fitted with another pipe which is like this i am trying to give you an industrial perspective of the problem rather than just stating the problem as it is so the problem is you have to connect these pipelines it is very common that it, no matter whatever plant you visit you will see that there are lots of pipelines and pipelines are not always straight because they have to connect different systems and there are space constraints and so on so the pipeline has to be bent many times so there must be some fitting which connects this pipe to this pipe there are two things which have happened one is the direction has changed maybe the axis of these are oriented at an angle 90 degree it is not required or necessary that it has to be 90 degree but let us say that uh, the angle between these two is 90 degree plus there is a reduction in cross sectional area that also is not a must sometimes cross sectional area may remain the same or may even may increase but uh, one has to just have a fitting to fit that and that fitting in industry is known as an elbow so what an elbow does it basically tries to have a fitting like this to fit or match with pipelines of different orientations and different sections if the angle between these two axes is 90 degree it is called as a 90 degree elbow like that so if you we assume that this angle is 90 degree we uh, call it 90 degree elbow now this elbow it cannot be free in air because 
we will see that there is a lot of force that is being exerted on this elbow because of the change of linear momentum of the water that is entering and leaving. And because of that there is a force on the elbow and it has to be supported. So, it must be supported with a, with, with, with a support that provides some necessary reaction force which balances those forces exerted by the water on the elbow so that it is in equilibrium. Otherwise, it might have a tendency to move or to uh, get deflected from its equilibrium configuration and that will disturb the entire uh, stability of the structure. So, when you design a structure, you have to be careful of what are the support forces that need to be sustained in by that structure. For that, the support force has to basically balance the force exerted by the fluid on the structure. So, we have to know what is the force exerted by the water on the pipe bend. So, that is our objective of solving this problem. That is, we want to know that uh, what is the force exerted on the elbow. What, what are the data given? Let us try to list that force on the elbow. Let us say, say that you have uh, points 1 and 2 or let us call these as sections 1 and 2. So, at the section 1 say there is a equivalent pressure P1 which is given, area of cross section is given, at the section 2 you have P2 and A2 these are given. Okay. Let us say that uh, the <coughs> velocity profile is uniform, if it is not uniform at least you know what is the average velocity. So, you know the average velocity at section 1, you know the average velocity at section 2. Okay. However, from you know the average velocities, experimentally what you can always find out is what is the flow rate. And if you know the area of cross section, say it is a circular one, you know the diameter, so you know the area of cross section. So, A into the average velocity is the flow rate, from that you can find out the average velocity. If you neglect the viscous effects, then the average velocity is same as the velocity at a point at any point. So, uh, you may neglect that, let us say that. Uh, neglect non-uniformity in velocity profile. What else is given that what is the weight of the elbow? say it is equal to W. Weight of the elbow it is, it is a solid, so it has its own weight. So, we are considering that weight and uh, we are given the density of the water which is there inside, rho is the density and what else we require? Let us say the angle between this inlet and the outlet, so the water is entering like this, it is leaving like this, the angle is 90 degree. Okay. If it is not 90 degree, then also like if it is inclined, it will have its horizontal and vertical components of the flux, velocity and so on. Now, we are interested to write the expression for the force component along x and force component along y. Sometimes you see that uh, the pressure at 1 is given, but pressure at 2 may not be given. But if you assume an inviscid flow and you connect a streamline say from the center of the section 1 to center of the section 2, you can use the Bernoulli's equation to find out what is the pressure and if you assume that the pressure is uniformly distributed over the section, then uh, that will be the pressure throughout the section 2. You have to keep in mind that what can create a non-uniformity in pressure. So, if you have pressure at the center line say at P1, 
what can make it deviate if you go to a different location in the cross section, curvature of the streamlines. So, if streamlines are almost parallel to each other, then uh, the change in pressure is very, very small or negligible. So, then we are assuming that streamlines here and here are almost parallel to each other. See, if you take that on the bend, that is not valid. So, we are considering the section 2, uh, which is which, which has actually crossed the curvature part of the elbow. This is an assumption. In reality, the piece may be short, so that may not be a very good assumption, but this is what we are assuming. Otherwise, you have to also consider a non uniformity in pressure across the section, which itself adds to the complexity. We are not going into the complexities, but I am trying to highlight the complexity because these are important, these may be important in some realistic conditions. So, two important complexities may be non uniformity of velocity over each section and non uniformity of pressure over each section. And when non uniformity of velocity over each section is occurring, then that means that uh, and it is always there until and unless it is a highly turbulent flow at the velocity profile due to high mixing is almost uniform. Otherwise, if there is a velocity profile, it gives an important understanding that yes, viscous effects are important. And when viscous effects are important, you cannot apply Bernoulli's equation along a streamline between 1 and 2. Still, you can use A1 V1 average equal to A2 V2 average. That is a conservation of mass that does not depend on how viscous forces are occurring or not. But uh, you cannot really relate the pressure at 1 with pressure at 2 using the Bernoulli's equation. One has to solve the viscous flow equations to find out that. Now, when you write the resultant force along x, so let us let us try to write the resultant force in a vector form. So, we are using the Reynolds transport theorem, the right hand side, the first term due to unsteadiness that is 0, next term is integral of rho v when you are writing this force f what is this force f let us now write what are the constituents of this one force is the force exerted by the elbow on the water so, that is the F reaction. Then what other force is there? Force due to pressure is there plus force due to two weights. One is the weight of the elbow itself, another is the weight of the water which is instantaneously there within the elbow. So, F due to water weight and plus F due to elbow weight. Okay. So, let us try to write these uh, expressions of these forces. Of course, this is what you are interested to find out F reaction. So, this is an unknown. Force due to pressure. How do you find out what is the force due to pressure? What is the force due to pressure? Resultant force due to pressure on the control volume? P1 A1 for section 1 along x, P2 A2 for section 2 along y, like that? It is not like that. I have mentioned it earlier why. When you have a pressure distribution on a surface, you have to consider the force due to gauge pressure only because atmospheric pressure is there from all sides and that is nullifying the total force when it is integrated over a closed contour. So, when you are writing the force due to pressure, it should be the net force because of the pressure over and above the atmospheric pressure. So, to calculate the force, P1 has to be converted into the gauge pressure at 1. So, P1 gauge has to be evaluated that is P1 minus P atmosphere. Similarly, this has to be converted into gauge pressure. This 
these are subtle but very important things these are places where uh, like in most of the cases students will make mistakes of course if you practice enough problems you will never make such a mistake but general tendency is like before the exam you just look into worked out examples so when uh, then these things are not highlighted you just look into the gross formula but these are very important things that you have to keep in mind don't just take it as a formula keep in mind that why it should be so that why you have to take the gauge pressure for evaluation of the force so force due to the pressure what should be the corresponding expression p1 gauge into a1 that is the net force due to pressure at section 1 so the in a vector notation we give call it this i cap then plus p2 gauge into a2 j cap you have to keep in mind that pressure is always into the surface in whatever phase you are considering pressure is always acting towards that okay then force due to the water weight what is that it is it is uh, not impossible to calculate what is the volume of this given this contour let us say the volume of the water is given that that is the volume of the elbow basically so if vol if the volume of the water is given then it is the what is the mass rho into volume of the water that into g is the weight g is acting along negative y then this is minus of this j and the elbow weight what is the elbow weight minus w j and the right hand side the integral of when you are considering this integral first is uh, what are the surfaces across which fluid is flowing 1 and 2 what is the control volume that we have taken since we have represented the elbow weight we have considered the elbow also as a part of the control volume so the control volume let us draw the control volume so till you till you express explicitly that what is the force what is the resultant force that you are having it may not be so straightforward to say that what is the resultant uh, like what is the control volume that you have taken so if you say if you take this as the control volume then that means this excludes the elbow and then if elbow weight is not there but once if elbow weight is there you have basically taken including the elbow so it is elbow plus the water that you have taken the taken as the control volume so the question is then when you have taken this as the control volume the outer one as the control volume say which includes both the elbow and the water the question is then what is this for f reaction this is provided by it is now not provided by elbow by the water so what what is this so it considers there is a support which is there outside which exerts the force on this elbow plus water system so there is some support which is there which is not drawn in the figure uh, but uh, it is highlighting that support so now for that particular control volume we are having how many inlets and how many outlets we have one inlet and one outlet and let us write that so the right hand side uh, first let us write for the section 1 for the section 1 if you assume a uniform velocity profile then the, like this entire integral will be based on the velocity say v1 which is over uniform over the section 1 so rho 
then for v1 it is v1 i cap and in and then then into v1 a1 so with what sign plus or minus right you can clearly see that if there is a velocity variation along y then this expression is not valid then you have to integrate the velocity profile and uh, that would give a net momentum flux this is this is like a momentum flux so the net momentum flux will be different and uh, one if one assumes a uniform velocity profile and it is really not so then that is an error and one has to adjust that error with some momentum correction factor maybe but here because of uniform profile assumption that such a correction is not necessary otherwise if the velocity profile is given to you you can integrate it to get this expression then there is no correction factor factor necessary then uh, for the surface 2 plus rho what is the velocity at section uh, at at the section 2 let us say v2 it is directed along which direction minus y so minus v2 j into this is plus so the left hand side is equal to the right hand side and that will give you what are the components of the reaction force this is the force exerted by the support on this system so it should provide an equal and opposite force on the support and the support must be good enough to sustain that force okay so if it is unsupported then because of some resultant force it will the the elbow may start moving okay <coughs> Let us look into one more example. let us say there is a cart like this and a water jet is striking on the cart and uh, it is changing its direction let us say this angle is theta let us say that the velocity of the water jet is uh, v and the corresponding area over which the jet is moving here is a cross section area and let us assume that this is smooth so if this is smooth that means there is no friction that the fluid is encountering as it is moving along the cart only its direction is getting changed the first question that we would like to answer is that will it be possible to keep the cart stationary if such a water jet falls on it and changes this direction for simplicity let us assume that this is a frictionless surface and maybe assume that the cart is uh, having having a particular weight but uh, that is not of great concern for us because we are interested to consider the motion along x whether they whether there will be any motion along x or not first of all uh, let us say that what what do you expect to be the velocity at which the water leaves the cart say 
say it enters the cart at 1 and leaves the cart at 2. What is the velocity that you expect? If the velocity here is say v1 which is equal to v, what is the velocity at 2? There what are the, ch first of all if you consider a streamline that connects some point at uh, the inlet with some point at the outlet, then could we apply the Bernoulli's equation along that streamline? If it is, the first question is if it is in viscid flow, then uh, like that, that is the first question that you would like to ask. So assume that it is an in viscid flow. If it is an in viscid flow, yes, provided other conditions are satisfied. What are those? You have density as constant and steady flow obviously although unsteady version of Bernoulli's equation is also there but let us assume that it is a steady flow. So if this is a smooth one uh, we and the water this, this is quite thin and it, uh, this uh, because of the smoothness there is no there is no such wall roughness effect that is propagated into the uh, fluid. So it is as if like a frictionless flow. Although you, this is this is a great idealization. In reality, the effect of the solid boundary will always be propagated into the fluid, and in in all cases, uh, it is it is likely to give uh, viscous resistance. But here, we are just idealizing it by too much and assuming that that effect is not there. If that effect is not there, if the velocity here is v1, the velocity v2 should be equal to v1, provided that the difference in height between 1 and 2 is neglected. So we are neglecting the z2 minus z1 that is neglected. It is really a very small height and the corresponding potential energy change is insignificant as compared to the kinetic energies of the jets. See in engineering uh, when we say that we are neglecting something there is a there is a very important thing that we should keep in mind. We are not actually neglecting potential energy, we are neglecting the change in potential energy and that change itself may not be negligible in an absolute sense. What we are banking on is that the jet is falling on with a very high kinetic energy with respect to those kinetic energies the potential energy effect is negligible, not that it is always in an absolute sense negligible. And regarding the pressure, both are exposed to atmospheric pressure, so the pressure is uh, like P1 and P2 are same. So if the Z2 minus Z1 is neglected and if we may apply the Bernoulli's equation with all the assumptions satisfied, then you have V1 equal to V2. In general, if there is a friction here, V2 will be somewhat less than V1. But because of the frictionless nature, V2 is V1 and then you can apply the continuity equation, then A2 also must be same as A1. Okay. Now, uh, let us say that we are interested to find out what is the resultant force along x because that is what is going to make it move maybe. So the resultant force on x, resultant force along x what is that? So you have two sections basically, so you have one section like this where the fluid is entering and you have another section at 2 where the fluid is leaving. These are only the two flow sections. Where do you choose your control volume? See since there is no friction on the ground, it will not be any difference, uh, any different if you include that uh, like all the structural part of the cart and exclude the structural part of the cart for obtaining the force along x. Definitely for force along y it will be mattering but not force along x. So for force along x, the right hand side first the unsteady term is 0 and then integral of rho v vr dot n dA So this is like fx i plus fy j because this is in a vector form 
Now let us write, try to write it in, in terms of its scalar components. At the section 2, what is V? V has a magnitude V. What is the direction? Cos theta i plus sin theta j, right. So that is the V in the vector form and then the remaining is a into v that is integral of v dot n dA. What for the section 1? For the section 1, what is the velocity? V i and minus a v. So, what is the force along x? You can find out only the x component of that. that is rho v rho a v square into cos theta minus 1, right. This is the force exerted by the solid structure on the fluid, right. So, if you consider say a control volume like this. We just encompasses the fluid jet. So, this is the force exerted by the cart on the fluid. The fluid exerts an equal and opposite force on the cart. So, this force is positive or negative? This is negative, this is along minus x. So, force exerted by water on the cart is along plus x. So, you have a plus fx that is there on the cart. And that is quite obvious. Even if you do not go to go through the mathematics, if there is a jet striking like this, it should uh, exert a force along the x direction. So, if there is a fx on the cart, so the cart under this force may try to move, and if this is a frictionless surface, it will move always. If there is a friction, the static friction may just balance it and keep it in equilibrium, but if it is not, then it has to move. If it moves, the question is that then is 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 this consideration valid? That is, uh, like here we are having to use the relative velocity, but we do not know what is the velocity of the cart. So how we should go about it? That is the first question. Second is whether this velocity then we have to use the absolute velocity or the relative velocity. So these are the questions that we will like to address. Uh, in, in a subsequent theoretical development where we consider also the moving reference frames. Till now we have considered only the stationary reference frames. But in the jurisdiction of stationary reference frame, if you have to consider it, you have to consider somehow that this is stationary. Now how can you design a system such that this remains stationary? There could be many ways. Let us say, let, let, let me give an altern one alternative when you say that whether it is a good alternative or not. Let us say we have a pulley like this and let us say there is a weight mg which is there, this pulley is hinged supported like this. Is it acceptable? Will it work? No or yes? It depends on what is this weight and that you can design exactly because you know what is the exact magnitude of the force. So if you draw the free body diagram of the cart, what are the forces that you will see? You will see a tension in the string and you will see a force fx exerted by the water on cart. Okay. So when you have these two, of course the other y component is there, so y component you have the weight of the cart, then you have a normal reaction like that. But for us interesting is the x component and if you want to keep it in equilibrium, you have to balance T with fx on the cart and if you consider it to be all those idealistic situations that it is a 
frictionless pulley and uh, then what you get is that you get this tension same as the mg. So, this in turn from the mass pulley system is equal to the mg. So, you know that what has to balance what. So, you can put the correct mass here to keep it in equilibrium. Okay. But you can clearly see that uh, this is uh, this is a forceful arrangement to keep it in equilibrium, but in general because of these forces it will not be in equilibrium. And when it is not in equilibrium with these forces, it might have a velocity the, that velocity itself might change with time. So, it might have a situation when the reference frame which may be attached to the cart itself is moving and moving with arbitrary velocity or arbitrary acceleration. So, we have to also be equipped with uh, an analytical ability by which we can encounter such situations that is situations where you can encounter accelerating reference frames in general. When we say an accelerating reference frame, we mean accelerating frame, reference frame in all respects. That means, it could be linearly accelerating, it might have an angular velocity because of which it, it has its original acceleration. So, we have to next go for an analysis for accelerating reference frames. So, we will use certain nomenclature, we will consider an axis say capital X, capital Y, capital Z for an inertial reference frame and small x, small y, small z reference frame as an arbitrary it may be in, it may be inertial, may be non inertial, but it is a moving reference frame. If it is moving with an acceleration then it is non inertial, if it is moving with a uniform velocity it is still inertial. What we are interested to find out is that if we have a vector say a here in this reference frame and let us say that this reference frame is moving with an arbitrary angular velocity omega, then what is the derivative of this vector? with respect to the inertial reference frame. Can you show it if I ask you to show it? How do you show it? Say you have a vector A which is there in a reference frame that is rotating with an angular velocity omega. Let us say that the angular velocity is such that the rotation is taking place in the plane of the board. The rotation will take place in some plane, what is that plane? The plane is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. It might not be x y plane or y z plane like that, but it, it is some plane. So, in that plane this vector A is rotating. So, when it is rotating it comes to what state? It comes to a new location say this is at time t, it is at time t plus delta t. What we are keeping in mind? We are keeping in mind this is it is a fixed vector in a moving reference frame. This, so, this is a fixed vector in x, y, z that we have to keep in mind. It is not any arbitrary vector. That means, if you are sitting on this, you do not see any change in the at least in the length and uh, if you are outside although it is same in length, but because the reference frame is rotating this also rotates. Let us say that it traverses an angle delta theta over this time delta t. So, what is the change in the vector? The change in the vector is this delta a. Right? So, what is this delta a? For small delta t, the delta theta is small, so this is just like an 
arc of a circle. So, delta A in terms of magnitude is what? A delta theta in terms of a vector you have to give it a proper direction and sense. So, if if let us say that this is uh, A is in a direction of E 1 then it should be a direction which is normal to E 1 say E 2. If you want to find out what is D A D T, we if we are not mentioning any subscript capital X Y Z that means it we are talking about inertial then it is basically we are dividing this by delta t and taking the limit as delta t tends to 0. So, A E 2 into limit as delta t tends to 0 delta theta by delta t which is nothing but the magnitude of the angular velocity and what is omega cross A? Omega is what is the omega vector? It is omega scalar times a unit vector E 3 which is perpendicular to the plane of the board. So, you may take E 1 like x, E 2 like y and E 3 like z just like that. This cross A is A E 1. So, it is omega A E 2. E 1, E 2, E 3 form orthogonal basis just like x i j k. So, you can write that d a d t capital x y z is equal to omega cross a, but this is only for a vector a which is fixed in the small x y z reference frame. If it is moving in a small x y z reference frame, then that velocity also has to be added with this. So, in general for a for an arbitrary vector A in capital X in small x y z you have d A d t capital x y z is equal to d A d t small x y z plus omega cross A. So, this change is felt even if A is fixed but if A is moving relative to small x y z this is an additional change. So, that is the total change and this you know from your earlier studies that is known as Chesel's theorem. So, we will take up from this and try to write an equation of linear momentum conservation for a control volume which is having arbitrary motion. It may have angular motion, it may have linear motion, it may be a non accelerating reference, it may be a accelerating reference frame in general. So, we will take that up in the next class. Thank you.